Hello, I'm Professor Weston Lloyd. I'm the chair of the Department of Humanities and assistant professor of history. I mainly teach U.S. survey courses, but I also teach a few opera level courses, like public history and American history since 1945. Hi, I'm Professor Hannah Benefield, and I'm the BFA in Creative Writing Coordinator and Instructor of Creative Writing. I teach uh, Comp 1 and 2, and I also teach Creative Writing, Advanced Fiction, and Advanced Nonfiction. Hi, I'm Dr. Annette Graves. I coordinate the English and Intercultural Studies major, and I oversee the undergraduate TESOL certification program and the minor in Applied Linguistics. Um, and I'm also an associate professor of English, and in that capacity, I teach our gen ed comp classes, intro to lit. I'm Hi, I'm Dr. Rachel Lockenville. I'm an assistant professor of English. In addition to my uh, composition classes, I teach Survey of American Literature every semester, and then I rotate through diversity courses. Uh, this semester, I'm teaching African American Literature. In the fall, I'll teach my favorite, which is Native American Literature, and then I also love teaching women's literature. How about it? Yeah. I graduated in Southeastern in 2010 as a history major. I graduated in, um, in 2011 as an interdisciplinary studies major, and then I never left. I worked on the staff side for several years before um, picking up adjuncting on the side and eventually going full time. Um, I also have my younger brother here as a freshman uh, this year on campus and he's also on the SCU wrestling team. Yeah, I followed my daughter here. So my daughter was a student here and an English and Intercultural Studies major, and that's how I heard when the position came open. And then my younger son followed us here. And uh, he actually transferred here from the University of Notre Dame for, um, for faith-based reasons. And uh, he never regretted that decision. He graduated in 2016. And um, we're very uh, proud of both of our children's accomplishments and of what SEU put into them. It, having our children come here was one of the best decisions my husband and I ever made. Unlike my three colleagues here, I have no prior connection to Southeastern University. In fact, my very first time in Florida was for my interview for this job. Um, I'm from Pennsylvania, and I have to say that in spite of Florida summers, I love being at Southeastern University. Um, the students are my favorite part of the school, and uh, I think my colleagues are my second favorite part of the school, if you guys don't mind being second. <laughs> so I'm, I'm really glad that, that I'm working here. Well, in terms of the history program, we have a number of students that have gone on to law school, uh, a, a, a number of students that have gone into military, into teaching, uh, freelance writers, um, editors, uh, all sorts of careers. So it's not limited just to teaching. It's not limited just to the historic profession, uh, but you can do a lot of things with a history degree uh, applicable to various industries. So for the Bachelor of Arts in English, um, there are so many job opportunities for someone trained in English. Uh, and partly because they develop the skills of critical thinking so much through the study of literature and the analysis of literature. So law schools are also really like English majors. Um, teaching is certainly a track that they can go to. They can seek certification if they want to teach in elementary or high school later. Um, but they can also pursue teaching at the college level, which some of them do. Um, but some of our English majors become writers, copy editors, uh, work for newspapers. Uh, so for example, uh, one of my favorite recent students is uh, Danny Sashi. Uh, she graduated last year, and I actually just had tea with her the other day. She's uh, now working for, I believe it's a Christian nonprofit. She does copy editing for them. She's also started to do grant writing and marketing for them with her English degree. And um, another recent favorite would be Emma Schlicky Duncan. Uh, Duncan's her married name, so congrats, Emma. Uh, she graduated uh, with a Bachelor of Arts in English, and she's actually now at Rutgers University pursuing her Master's in English with a specialization in Native American Studies, which makes me really proud. So we have alumni that are teaching overseas. Um, Kendall Niza is teaching in China. Uh, Andrew Drew Smith is just finishing his Master's in Applied Linguistics at Georgia State, I believe it is, and he's headed to China then to uh, teach English. 
Um, Alicia Colby is getting her master's in Spain and she's uh, funding that master's degree by teaching English in Spain. Um, Megan Evans uh, got her MED TESOL and uh, is now uh, getting ready to go and she's going to actually coordinate a new educational development project in Verona, Bulgaria. And, uh, and then my daughter, <laughs> Uh, Alex Vidito Rasmussen and her husband Tori Rasmussen, they serve as missionaries in Tanzania and they were just featured recently in a local um, magazine, The Late Lander, uh, for their work there um, and outreach among um, the Muslim community there. And so there are plenty of jobs stateside as well as internationally. I only have one alum right now. Um, we're still a young program, but Serena Tidlin got into her first choice, Master of Fine Arts and Creative Writing, and she is doing amazing. And if I can add to that, to brag about Serena, a little yeah. bit, her mentor is Patricia Smith, who is one of, or perhaps the leading female black American writer in the country. Um, so it's actually a really significant accomplishment. Yeah. Uh, the Visiting Writers Series is a relatively new feature of the Humanities Department. Uh, we just finished our second year of the series, uh, and it's something that, with the help of my colleagues, uh, I helped start in the department when I came, partly because I had such phenomenal experiences in my own undergrad meeting the writers that I was studying in class, and so uh, we're now creating that opportunity for our students here at Southeastern. So each year we pick a widely known published writer, and we make sure that their work is featured in at least one, if not multiple, classes within the humanities department. We then bring that writer to campus for um, a series of events. They get to meet with the class that studied their writing, and then they also do an event for the public. And so far, it's been a really successful way to engage the students with a living writer, and um, even to attract students to the program by helping students from other disciplines uh, see how exciting it can be to meet a creative writer and learn from them. Our very first writer was the Cherokee novelist Diane Glancy, who is famous for her novel, Trail of, uh, sorry, for her novel Pushing the Bear, which is a novel about the Trail of Tears. She actually was here for four days in our first year of the Visiting Writer series, doing events um, both for the university and also a talk for Lakeland Public Library. She also took my Native American literature students on a field trip to St. Augustine, uh, where they learned about the captivity of Native people at Castillo de San Marcos. So that was a really rich and full experience that the department and the dean's office and the provost's office together made possible. This year we brought Odilia Gavan Rodriguez. Uh, she's a Chicana writer uh, who is known not only for her own poetry, but also for editing uh, Voices for Social Justice, which is a collection of poetry written by people from around the world um, advocating for equality and speaking out against racism. And uh, we drew a lot of students and some members of the community to those events. We want to grow the program. First, we want to grow it by continually um, maintaining the caliber of the writers that we bring and even increasing the popularity of those writers. Um, and so we had two stellar writers for the first two years, um, and we did that with a relatively small budget, partly because they're both friends of mine. And so they were willing to come for um, just very, relatively small honorariums. And in order to get writers that are widely known that we might not already have personal connections to, we really would like to grow our budget for this. So if you're passionate about writing, about creative writing, about connecting to the work that you study in the classroom, if you want to help current students experience that or future students, we would love for you to contribute to this program and help us to grow it. Uh, and who knows, maybe there'll be enough funding someday to have a whole series within one year where we have multiple writers coming who are each featured in a different class. Conference. Expressions is our annual writing conference and we bring local and this year internationally recognized authors to come on campus and talk about this idea of storytelling. And it's not just limited to creative writers, and we actually have people from all industries coming um, to learn about this process. So this year, some of our featured writers, uh, Josip Novakovic, um, widely known, just came out with a new book, um, which will be for sale here during the conference. Um, 
Joni Fisher, she's a local author. She also is a magazine writer and pilot. Um, and Paul Lindsay, who uh, was helped start the creative writing program. Paul Lindsay, who also just came out with a new book um, about um, marriage and foundations of marriage. Um, so it's a, just an incredible, action-packed couple of days, um, full of breakout sessions and workshops where you can just really come and hone your craft for storytelling. Anyone can come. Um, for the two days, it's only $50, which I'm told is very cheap for a writing conference, um, especially in this area, and for the caliber of writers that are coming. Um, so anyone is invited. There's more information at cam.su.edu. You can buy tickets. Um, but it's coming up in a little over two weeks, so we're really excited. Right for them. The Department of Humanities is the perfect place for them because we'll equip you, whatever your uh, interest is, in crossing those cultural boundaries, whether it's a mission. So in English and intercultural studies is the, the perfect uh, match for someone with a heart for missions because it equips you with uh, the TESOL certificate. So it gives you a way of being self-supporting on the mission field. And um, particularly one thing we do with the English and intercultural studies major is we've developed a study abroad initiative so that uh, for they have to complete a six hour credit hour internship. The cool thing about this is that the curriculum we choose, for example, we use a simplified English version of the novel Les Miserables. And teaching that gives us the perfect opportunity to talk about worldviews and compare value systems. And particularly because we have a returning relationship um, the community, we build a, a, a foundation of trust with the community and they start asking us questions like, why do you keep coming here um, when if we could leave here, that's the one thing we would want to do, but you're coming to us. And then they ask us questions about the text they're reading that really gets at the heart of, of the Christian worldview and what's different about the way you see people when you're a Christian particularly through the eyes of the humanities. Because it, it teaches them to critically engage the world around them. Because people are important to God. I'm not going to try and top that. <laughs> <laughs> it did brainstorm five words. Uh, creativity, diversity, adventure, story, and craft. Can I just say what Rachel said? Nope. <laughs> uh, not allowed. I think that was also five words. So. <laughs>